in order to create an WebRTC iOS application or any iOS application, you need to have a Mac and uh, it is good to have an iOS device so that you can test it directly. Right now I am opening an Xcode and as mentioned here, I'm just creating a new Xcode project. I'm choosing the, as mentioned here, as app. Let's choose the app here and name it as a live coding web RTC station. So I'm clicking the next button here and it will just create the application in the downloads directory. So right now we just created the project. Uh, let the minimum deployment to some lower value because my OS device does not have the latest iOS version. So right now I'm just, uh, I have created the project and I'm going to add the dependency. Previously, probably you know, there are XC frame, there are two XC frameworks. One of them is the WebRTC XC framework and the other one is the WebRTC iOS SDK XC framework. And also we need to have the star screen for WebSocket connections. We just need to manage these three things in the earlier version. But for now, we will just add, we, we will resolve all things in just one shot. So as mentioned here, I'm just going to right click the my application and click add packages. So there was a, maybe there was a question, but let's take a look at after this, we finish this section. So I clicked the add packages and let's go back to here. Uh, enter the GitHub repository URL. This is our GitHub repository URL, the RTC iOS SDK. And then as mentioned here, I'm going to just click the add package. So as you see, it is getting this star screen here, the RTC iOS SDK here, uh, it resolves everything. So I just clicked add package. As you see, all the dependencies are available here. So there was a WebRTC XC framework dependency also available here to use it. Uh, so that we don't need to manage this one. So as you see, we just resolve all the dependencies in the next, uh, in this step. So right now we are just going to publish a WebRTC live stream to our test server. So as mentioned here, click the main storyboard on the left menu and open the library from the view show library and write your view in the search box as in the image below. So let me click the main stream storyboard here so as you see it is it is here and then i'm going to open a view show library and i'm just copy and paste the ui view library to here and then i'm drag the view on the library and drop it to the main storyboard as we do and then arrange the size of the ui views as in the image below so let's make it to fill the view so you can arrange it this is just the ui stuff and I don't have too much experience in uh, UI widget in iOS. And after connect the, before doing that, let me add the suggested constraints for this UI. Let's add two suggested constraints so that it feels the, just let me check the constraints. Yeah, I think it's okay. So in the next section, connect the UI view to the view controller. Even if you like, if you like to know how to do that, let me give you some quick instructions for complete beginners. Create two editors, one for the main storyboard and one for the view controller Swift. I just created a, another editor here and I am just, I just click here and click the view controller. Then there, there are two editors, as you see, main storyboard on the right and the view controller on the left. So it is a little tricky to uh, add dependency for, for iOS because in my earlier experience was mostly about Android. So I mostly connect through some programmatical way, but in iOS, we can just do that in a couple of clicks. As we mentioned here, right click the UI view in the main storyboard and drag over to next editor and release the right click. Then pop-up will appear uh, as here, and we just name the outlet as in the image. So outlet is going to be the video view. So let's go back to here. I just right click. So and just clicking a uh, video view, and then I connect it. 
so that uh, we have video view reference in in the view controller so yeah as mentioned here i think it looks in the same way video view and in the next section yeah because the participant publish uh, requires camera and microphone permissions and ios just ask uh, requires us to give the descriptions why the device requires camera and why the device requires microphone so that uh, i'm just going to add these things to info p list so let me add i'm just clicking the info p list i'm clicking here and privacy camera usage description so i think i can close this one for now so let's write something let me access to the camera and Let's add the microphone usage as well. Microphone usage description. And let me access to the microphone. This is required. Otherwise, the application just crashes when it tries to access to the camera or microphone. So as the info peel is, seems something like that. So let's take a, let's check it again. Microphone and camera usage. And then we will just create the Ant Media client. I'm just adding the WebRTC iOS SDK at the top. And initialize the Ant Media client. And then I'm just copying this stuff. So, uh, in this sample, as you see, guys, we just give the video view as a to appear ourselves to render ourselves. We just set the URL for the WebSocket uh, communication, and this is our test server. So, if if you're just going to try how to play the web parties things in iOS, you don't need to set up an Ant Media server. You can just use a test Ant Media IO as we do in here. And then you can give, then we are just calling the publish command here, and we are just giving a stream ID reference. So uh, the stream IDs are unique on the server side. Some of us use the stream one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, it will have some kind of issues to publishing the stream. Uh, so then let me try stream one two three and i'm going to run the application yeah build succeeded uh yeah there was a let's take a look at my screen so let me remove the sample application here and i'm going to run again it is asking to access to camera and the microphone. And I think right now it is sending the stream. So you, you probably guess that how you know that it is successful or not. There are delegates for the WebRTC uh, and media client, and it is being notified when there is a new, when it is started, finish, or some kind of errors. I can even show that. But let's check if it is working for now. So I'm clicking the test WebRTC player. Uh, and as far as I remember, we just use the stream one, two, three. Yeah, it seems it is working then. So uh, as you see, so right now we are just publishing the stream from iOS to the Ant Media Server. And right now we are playing the stream. So that is for the publishing part. Guys, any questions you have before proceeding to the next section? Oh, what are the constraints? So I get an error, cannot find type and media client in scope. Yeah, it is a good question. So first, team, you just need to add the dependency, as we mentioned here. If you add packages and uh, click add packages and then enter the our GitHub repository URL, it resolves the dependency and then it will just add it automatically as we do here. Then. The part TC iOS SDK will result. And from Hadi, please try this example API token because my issue appeared. 
So absolutely we will try it, Hadi. Just let's continue our way to publish and to play scenario. And because this session is also being recorded and will be published to the YouTube as a session how to use the WebRTC iOS SDK to publish this stream. Then let's proceed for the second part. We just published the stream to Ant Media Server, and in the second part, let's assume that there is a stream on the Ant Media Server, and we just would like to play it. So, as you see, we just changed two things in here. We just set the remote set remote view in here because it renders the remote video in this container. The WebSocket URL is same. And because we are just going to play the stream, we are just calling the play function. So play. So then it is. This is just the changes we need to make on the server side, uh, on the application side. And I'm again running the application, so it will not play because there is no app stream on the client on the server side. So uh, I'm going to the RTC publish page. And write the stream one two three for one two three for our test. So this is stream one two three, and click the start publish button. So right now it is sending to the, our test server, and we will just try to it on in the iOS device. So stream one two three, and I'm just clicking the button. Yeah, as you see, we are publishing on the left. This is left for me. Maybe this is right for you. And I'm playing the same stream on the Ant Media server in iOS. This is just a screen recording. As you see, the latency is very low. I'm based in right now in Ankara, and this server is Germany. So it is just going there and coming back. So as you see, we all we also make this stuff. So guys, as you see, the publish and the play scenario is very basic features of creating a real-time streaming application so right now we are just doing these things in a very easy way as you see and in the next video or in the next live coding session we are just going to show how to broadcast the screen of ios device to the ant media server and maybe in the same session or the next session we are just going to create how to do the conferencing in ios so these things are also very easy to do that. And it will be just very easy live coding sessions like that. So if you have any questions, please let me know uh, on the chat window. Or if you don't have any, we will just go over the headies problem. How to set maximum bitrate and resolution SDK during the publishing of a stream? Yeah, it is a good question. Uh, as you see, we, there are just a couple of functions that we use in here, but there are mu much more than functions available in the WebSocket, uh, not only for WebSocket, WebRTC communication as well. So for instance, when if we need to set a delegate, then Ant Media Server, uh, sorry, the WebRTC client will notify you with lots of notifications and callbacks. Uh, let's take a look at the Ant Media client delegate. So this is this is a callback client did connect. So it is called when the WebSocket is connected. Remote stream started, play started, play even play even finish or there are some kind of other functions uh, available here as well. In addition, client set target FPS. We can set the target FPS here and set target resolution here. So it just uses target resolution to open the camera. And I think we also have another function that is about to be traits. Let me it set maximum video bps yeah it's just says says the maximum video uh, bits per second uh, for publishing to stream so is i hope it is a um, answer for your question yeah this is the end of the session generally we publish the stream in ios we play the stream in ios then if you have any questions uh, please let me know if you don't have any questions. We can send you some copies, maybe. <laughs>